What's up, Pensacola area friends? Are you looking for a high-end center console in that mid-30 range, but you don't wanna spend the high-end money? Well, today we're right here at Daybreak Marine and beautiful, it's beautiful here in Pensacola. Don't you think, Luke? Absolutely. I mean, it's the day it's the best to shoot videos. Earth. And we are literally getting rid of the 2024 inventory. And behind me, we've got a 340cc by Edgewater. And if you know Edgewater, you know that when it comes to fishing and when it comes to family fun, this is the boat. And so in this video, we're gonna take a hard look at this boat and we're gonna show you how literally right now off of MSRP, you can save $200,000 on this unit. We're really excited about it and we're gonna look at it right now. All right, Luke, so let's just talk about some of the uh, general, uh, some of the general details about this uh, 340cc with Edgewater. I'm Absolutely. excited about it. And uh, it's the time of year where we need to move boats out. Yep, it's a 2024, 24 is coming to an end. So we're trying to move some inventory. We've got to move the inventory. That's why we're doing this. That's why we're doing this video. It's very specific to right now, okay? And so this boat itself, we've got the length of 34 feet. Is that right? Is that length overall? No, tack on about two extra feet for those engines in the back. Yeah, so we've got the engines in, in the back and we're going to look at that. It's got a pretty cool wrap around a little bit on yep. those engines. You can, you can get around them a little bit. So we're going to look at that. We're going to get in the boat here in a minute. In terms of the beam on this boat, do you know what the uh, beam size is? It's a 10 foot six beam. 10 six. So it's a big boat. Okay. Um, plenty of room to walk around and plenty of room for the family, plenty of room to fish as well. Yeah, we got plenty of room to fish. We're gonna talk about that too. We're gonna look at this. We got some great, great fishing features. And in terms of the power pushing it, our options are, what is it, four, two twin 425s and twin 450s? Or yeah, we've got work? the 450s on this one. Okay. So they did test this boat out with the old 425s. It went about 59 miles an hour. I expect with these 450s that it's going to go a hair over 60. Just depend how much weight you got on the boat, how much gas, yeah. and the conditions of that day. So basically what you're saying, we're looking at about a 60 mile an hour top end-ish which means if you're doing a cruise, you can get pretty decent economy in that 31 to 40 mile an hour range in most cases. You're probably gonna be somewhere in that for the 31 mile an hour cruise, you're 3,500 RPM. I think I saw that it was. Yep, and you're about sucking down 1.3 gallons. Yeah, I think it was like 1.3, 1.39 in yep. that range. So 1.3 to 1.4 isn't bad for a boat this size. You know, if you, if you know boats, you know, that's certainly not bad. And the great thing is though, if you wanna hurry up and get to the rigs, you can get to the rigs really, really quickly because we're talking, if you wanna pump it up, go 70 miles out, we're there 90 minutes, yep. having a good time, and we're on the fish, which I know is important to us here in Florida because we are ready to fish more than we're ready to go, right? Yep, and it's, I mean, it's got almost 400 gallons of fuel on this, so you can go overnight trips, you can go out for however long you want, and however far you want. Okay, cool. All right, so now we're gonna go and take a hard look at this boat. We're not gonna just do a quick look, we're take a hard look because if you're serious about buying it, you're gonna wanna see it. So we're gonna show you the details. We're gonna open the stuff up. We're gonna take a look at the electronics. And this way you're gonna know if this 340cc is the right boat for you, okay? Let's go. All right, so let's start in the stern area of the boat. You know, what's really interesting I noticed about this, Luke, is you've got, you know, what's fascinating about this boat and with Edgewater in general is if you said, is it more of a straight fishing boat? Is it more of a you know family fun boat? A lot of people would say it's right there in the middle. Would yeah. you agree with that? Yeah, you've got all those pleasure features, but you've also got two huge live wells, huge fish boxes, and I mean, rod holders scattered around the boat. Yeah. Um, outriggers, it's a fishing boat as well as your sandbar boat. Yeah, yeah. So what I like about this is if you look here, um, we've got our, you know, our bracket, but the swim platform really comes out. And so in terms of having access to the engines, but also just being able to get out here, whether you might be fishing off of the stern yep. and off of you know your platform, I really like now how the boats do this. I would think that's a nice benefit. And of course you've got your you know, rod holders back here. You've got some simple storage as well. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling, I'm feeling this area. Are you, how do you, you know, what do you, when you look at this area here, Luke, anything that comes to mind for you? Man, a lot of these bigger boats, sometimes they're hard to walk around on the back. Yeah. Me and you are both standing here. We can walk around, there's plenty of room. Even if you're at the sandbar, the engines are off. You can pull up here, have a drink right here. Um, 
as well on your side, there's a dive ladder right there. There's plenty of room in, in the transom area. That's right, so we've got the dive ladder underneath me right here. And you see how far back I am to the stern area. And so, you know, basically I'm like literally able to get to the back of the engine. So I really like this feature about Edgewater. And so now let's go ahead and move ourselves up a little bit, Luke. And this is, I'm really excited about the cockpit area here because you know we've got we've got such a really strong mix so first off you've got your bench seating which is nice for two to three people but it retracts it yep. comes in and out when you're fishing around the boat you can flip that up and it's fishing right there um but you got your wife and kids on the boat you can put put them back here in the seat and they're totally safe yeah and so we put this up and it slides in and so now if we're you know, looking to have that full cockpit area. We've got that full area. We've got a live well that is right here. And to your point, and I'm excited about this because as a boat owner, I know how big of a deal it is to uh, make sure that the wife doesn't get seasick. This boat here, the one that we're pushing out, comes with a sea keeper too. Yep, absolutely. That is a huge plus for this boat. This boat is not gonna have any roll when you're out there it's in twos and threes. Um, your wife isn't gonna hate you being thrown up off, off the side of the boat. <laughs> um, but yeah, the sea keeper is a huge plus. It's about a $60,000 upgrade yep. and you're getting it at a cost. So yeah, it's a great deal, man. I have a sea keeper on my boat and uh, it's just like, it's such a game changer for the entire family. It's stunning what it can do especially let's say if you're on the drift, you're not just kind of rolling the whole time and you're just slightly going up and down. So having that feature, one thing you notice here about the edge water that I really like too, and make sure you catch this Vita, is this, we got a lot of access. If anybody has ever owned a boat before, you know how frustrating it can be to access your equipment. But I'm looking at this here, Luke, and it's like, I can literally jump in here, no problem, and I am uh, just have access to all my pumps to, you know, just to do whatever I need to do in here. The batteries, of course, the batteries are more elevated up, right? So they're not, they're not more further back to the stern. So they stay above, you know, the liquid area or, you know, the moisture area. But yes, sir. this is smart. Yeah, it's smart because your mechanic's not going to hate you. Um, he can get down there, lay down there if he's got to fix some pump pumps do some wiring he's gonna have no problem at all getting in there it's gonna be pretty comfortable for him yeah yeah so all right so that's a big deal want to make a note of that it's just this model this this essentially this model we have here in stock if you're looking for that mid-range again high end when i say mid-range middle of the road in terms of family in terms of fishing but you're looking for a high-end boat now you've got your sea keeper so you're having this incredible experience on the water You've got great access and the sign of any great uh, manufacturer, which is what you always look for is, how much access do I have? If you have a lot of access, you can usually generally tell that the manufacturer is a higher end manufacturer. So it's awesome. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, uh, live well and grill area. Vita, you can come over there and see us from, from this side. So Luke, Looks like we've got a nice working area. What do you think about this uh, setup that we've got? Yep, we've, we, got, we've got tackle storage down there at the bottom, a huge live well, and then a freshwater sink right there next to it. So somebody might say, why am I looking for a freshwater sink? Because, well, when you're, you know, you're, you're working with your tackle and you're doing stuff, it's nice just to be able to quickly wash your hands or do whatever you need to do. You can do that right here with the freshwater. It makes it simple. Plenty of uh, tackle storage right there. And one thing too, once again, it's like, when you're dealing with a higher end manufacturer, all the, like the hardware in the boat, the doors, everything is moves slower. And that sounds counterintuitive, but when yep. you're on a boat, that's actually really, really important because, and there's a name for that. I, forget, I don't know if you know the name for it, I Luke, it's, but it's, it just means that basically these hinges and everything moves. It's a heavier, heavier, like uh, covers, heavier doors, which means that it's slower to come out, but it also means that if you're rocking around, this doesn't just fly around either, which is what not what you want as a boat owner. And so it's more stable. Everything has like stability to what we're looking at. Got a huge live well, man. Yep. We got some magic in there. You can see it's that uh, uh, that light blue color that the fishies love. 
And so I'm feeling that. The other thing I'm feeling, Luke, that I really like about this boat is we got a lot of storage for the yellowfin. Can you pop that one open? So if you go out, if you run out to the rigs, you've got one of these on each side. So I'm thinking just looking at this, we could probably easily fit a few, I mean, we're probably looking at like four or 500 pounds worth of yellowfin. That's just me I agree. Uh, speculating, but as someone that does a ton of yellowfin fishing, we can, uh, we can certainly, we got the, we got the storage, man. We got the storage and it's not just the storage for the fish because one thing I noticed too about this one, Luke, is Here, I'm gonna come around. rod storage is always, as they like to say, a pita, a real pain in the tail. Yep. And so any place where we can store more rods is good. Now we're gonna look at that in the console, but I, I saw here when I was checking the boat out that once again, we've got, you know, rod storage here as well. So you're looking at the size of this. This is quite long. I don't know how long it is. It looks to me like it's like seven feet or something Yeah, seven like or that. eight feet, I think. And you can fit up to three rods in here. Yeah. So. Storage is a big deal. We've got that with no problem whatsoever. So I'm feeling that as a angler that wants, that wants uh, storage. And then it looks like here, Luke, we got just more, just more yeah, that's tackle. Your tackle storage. You can put your lures and everything like that. In there. Right, right. Nice, nice. All right. So we're ready to look at this uh, console area. Absolutely, and this is where the magic happens. Magic. Let's look at let's look at some of the magic. And let's bring the viewer on into this too. So tell us what what we're looking at here, Luke. What we've got uh, some big screens. It looks fancy. It looks nice. Break yep. it down. We've got two 16-inch Garmin's in there, a Fusion stereo. Um, you got your autopilot right here, Linco trim tabs, and all of your buttons right here for your lights, your fish boxes, everything like that. Um, we have the Yamaha Hellmaster joystick. Hellmaster? Yeah. You know what they say about the Hellmaster? Helm yeah to the Hellmaster because this way you don't look dumb in front of your wife and your friends. Listen, there's just certain things that they've come out with in the industry that make a really, really big difference in terms of your ability to dock a boat. And the Hellmaster is just one of those that absolutely just it's makes everyone bet. really look experienced even when you're not so much. Yeah, you can crab walk the boat right onto the dock right yeah. there. So if you're, you know, if you're saying, can I handle a boat that's in that, uh, you know, mid thirties range, can I, you know, manage it myself? Can I dock it myself? Introduce the Hellmaster. Absolutely. So, what you know, once again, I, as I'm looking at this, model here this one that we're trying to move out yes sir. here at the end of 2024 some really great upgrades we've got the sea keeper 2 mm -hmm. we've got the hellmaster we certainly didn't go short i mean this boat is very much ready to fish in here it like in terms out. of you said 16 inch garments which is uh which is really nice one thing i noticed too just about this console area it's just like it doesn't like i'm looking at the welding i'm looking at the joints and everything seems to me and, I, and i'm not surprised i mean it's an edgewater right mm -hmm. it seems very high end would you agree with that yeah everything's flush on this boat um you won't find many imperfections on an edgewater if any at all um i find new things every that i'm impressed with every time i come on this boat so it amazes me yeah we've got additional storage and um i'm, I'm guessing these are like charging packs or oh, do you know what those are no, I don't actually. All so right. yeah, those are your charging. Packs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charge Master Plus. All right, so we've got that, and then of course with our um, <clears throat> helm chairs, we've got <clears throat> this retractable. Now, what's interesting about the way that they've done this, in that you would probably appreciate this if you've if you know if you've owned many boats, these don't retract very <laughs> easily in a lot of these boats, and and now we've got just a comes up very easily, which is important because lots of times you're gonna to wanna to be standing up, uh, but there's other times when you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and sit down. And of course, they've got the perfect position for the foot rest, which I like, Luke, right? Yeah, absolutely. I have been in boats and I actually own one. Of, I've got a, a 28 footer myself and my feet dangle mm -hmm. when I am, when I have, when I'm not in the stand, you know, stand up position driving drives me crazy. Yeah. It's a flaw in the engineering. Edgewater has really thought about this at an angled footrest all the way across. 
So when you're running 70 miles, you can do that. And the other thing about this, it's wide enough that actually three people could, because you can take these arm rests up, you can have three across here. Yeah, you can fit uh, you, your wife, and your kid in here. Um, what Edgewater did with this boat is made it so there's not an uncomfortable spot in the boat. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what they're known for. It's a very luxury high-end boat and they want you to feel like it, so. Yeah, well, I'm feeling it as somebody that loves boating and boats in general, I'm certainly uh, feeling it and it's nice. We've got our uh, sea keeper controls at the top and uh, of course we've got our outriggers. This is ready to fish right now. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's not like, listen, if you come in here to daybreak, you're not gonna, see this boat and say hey i need to um i need to add a bunch of stuff to have it fish ready so that's awesome of course we're still going to talk about the pricing because i think the pricing is a big deal let's look at the let's look at the bow area then we're going to talk about pricing and and why knowing boats this like caliber of boats the way i do knowing the market the way i do this right now the price that we have on this it is very priced to move. So yep, excited we're, to. We're aggressive on this boat right now. Yeah. And I, I think, think it'll go soon. Aggressive is an understatement. Okay, in the bow area, tons of room. Yep, it's comfy up here. How many people do you think that we could we could put in this boat? If you had like, if you really wanted to take friends, family, loved ones out, how many do you think we could take on this? Man, just in the front right here, we can fit five. You can fit two at the helm, two in the back, put bean bags all over the place. I mean, you could fit over comfortably probably around 12 people but yeah i was going to say 12 to 15 is yeah. my guess just, i mean just just looking at it and you see we got a great lounger here that's you know above the uh console area and then we've got large large storage area yep there, it's Luke. huge throw all, all your life jackets some fishing gear um the blow-ups if you're going to the sandbar and then also you've got um more rod space right here so um, they, they really prioritize um, how many rods you're gonna bring in this boat. Right, right. Once again, meeting the demand of the person that really wants to fish, but really wants to have great friends and family experiences, this really seems to do the trick. So a ton of storage, immediately noticeable that, and of course you've got these soft cushions in the front, we can put the cushions if we are trying to convert quickly over from having it fish ready uh -huh. to family ready, right? We can put our cushions in this storage area as well, as well as this one too. Yes, sir. Now, the other thing about this, and you can come over here and uh, get us from the you know front area, we've got the table capabilities here. So if you're looking to have, if you're on the sandbar, and if you're looking to have the whole, you know, like a meal or whatever with the family, You've got the table right here in your front V. Yep, a little cocktail lounge uh, table. Um, you can also drop it down and it becomes a becomes a bow filler cushion where it's like a sun pad. You can, yep. The girls can tan and you can just hang out up here. Right, so you can drop the table down, mm -hmm. put a pad over it. And then a cushion. And so yeah, now you've got like your big lounger near your console, but you've also got a really nice lounge area here as well. Yes, sir. From some serious yep. sunbathing. Yep, yep. I'm feeling that, Luke. Are you Are you feeling that as well? I hope you are. And then of course, we've got a windlass in the front. And uh, so that's a must have, but you already knew that if you were watching this video. Yep. Last thing I wanna look at, then we wanna it. talk about pricing and why this boat is so priced to move is let's just take a quick, quick look at our uh, console. We've got a little head in here. Once again, I notice how the door is slow to, it's just, it, it's got resistance hinges, which is so important when you're on the water and you don't want to swing it back and knocking you out. So as I get in here, I want you to see, we've got plenty of space. And so we've got, our head, we've got a little uh, sink, and uh, of course we've got, you know, even further, you know, equipment, uh, area electronics, uh, et cetera. So it's not a monster head area. I can stand, it's exactly six, let me see, I'm 5'11", and so it looks like it's about 5'10 in here. So it, you know, it's one of those things where, and you've probably seen this too, 
a lot of folks that are doing just day fishing trips, mm -hmm. they're, they don't want to have a ton of like, uh, like a, a big bed in there and take up a ton of area for that. What you want is to make sure you have what you need. If, you, if, if the ladies especially do, do need to use the bathroom, they can do that, but it doesn't take away so much of your other storage and some of the important things that you're gonna to want to really fish and to, you know, to, to do all the things that you're gonna to wanna to do on this boat. Absolutely, and they really prioritize like the forward lounge or storage space over maybe a bed in here. Right, Yeah. right, and that's what we just looked at. So as we're close, as we're wrapping this up, Luke, let's talk about money, Absolutely. because I know that's important to you, and we wanna be as honest and transparent with you as possible about what MSRP is for this boat, what we're offering it right now for. And again, as we're discussing this, this is for this boat. If you come in, this is the only one that we have available. I know it's gonna move. And especially if you do your research on the market on the 34, 35 CC market, right? Mm -hmm. Which the comps in the market, some brands that you would say, Luke, would be? Probably like an Everglades or like a 341 Camus, even a Solus, like a 32 Solus. Um, that's a luxury boat as well. Those are kind of the comps and they're all priced way higher than what we have this at now. Right, so MSRP for this unit right here is? 665. All right, so yep. 665 is MSRP. What this unit is being priced for, you come in here to daybreak in sunny Pensacola, what we're asking for right now is? $469,000. $469. Yep. Again, if you do your legwork, if you do your research, the pricing on this boat, that's an incredible value. And that's why I'm very, very confident it's gonna move quickly. Again, this is for the person that has been looking and looking for that, that mid-30 that mid high-end center console. You want to fish, you want family, you want your wife and kids to be happy, but you want your buddies to be happy when you're going offshore to the rigs. You've got that capability with the 340 Edgewater. And that's why I think it's gonna move quickly. Any final thoughts from you, Luke? Man, I'm just amazed with this boat. Um, it's a real all around, all around all-star, really. Yeah. Um, you won't find any blemishes in the boat. It, the fit and finish is amazingly well done by Edgewater. Um, you'll be comfortable wherever you sit in the boat. Mm -hmm. And I'd like invite y'all out here to come test drive it and see it yourself. So um, that's a great thing about coming here is like if they wanted to come in and take it for a test ride, they can do that. We can put it in and have them waiting for it. If they call us, absolutely. hypothetically, we can just go right on out in it. Yeah, you'll uh, you'll call me. We'll put it in the water for you. And then whenever you walk in the office, we'll talk a little bit and then we'll get on the boat. You know, which is just a side point. If you did end up getting this boat, we've got the dry storage here. We've got the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Cause I'm from Virginia and it's not so awesome like it is in Florida where quickly y'all will just take it off the rack. You'll put it in it's, it's just ready to go. Yep, it's about a 30 minute turnaround. So we've got a whole app for it. Um, I forget, I think it's Speedy Dock or something like that. Yeah. But it, it it's a smooth operation here. Um, and we'd love to, we, we've got spots open. So we'd love to fit you in. Okay, cool. All right, so hopefully that helps you get a clear sense for the Edgewater 340cc and that incredible discount with the Sea Keeper, with the Helm Master, fully loaded, ready to go, out the door, 469. And hopefully we will see you here with this guy, Luke. Yep, very yourself. That's right, very soon. Thank you.